Good evening and welcome to the Fiji Symposium in Bangalore, the platform for all dialogue on financial inclusion. And with me is from a partner organization from the Gates Foundation, Jamie Zimmerman. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you. Tell us, how does it feel to be part of the first ever Fiji Symposium? Well, it's a really exciting uh, time to bring these different partners together, um, especially here in Bangalore, in India, kind of the heart of so much innovation in digital financial services and in uh, technology and uh, information communication technology. And it's kind of a wonderful time in even the um, history of India and all of the innovation that, it's, that we've seen here in the last few years on uh, digital financial inclusion. Um, so it's, uh, it's really exciting to be able to um, host the first symposium, um, bringing together the, uh, the UN's International Telecommunications Union with the World Bank Group, two very big, very uh, powerful and important organizations with also uh, the Bank for International Settlements as part of this big initiative. And to be able to do it uh, and have the launch event for this, um, for this initiative in India is, is a really exciting time and uh, it's great to see everyone here and there's a lot of great energy um, in all of the uh, the different sessions that I've been in today so it's it's really exciting. Uh, so as you know uh, as of today two billion people are unbanked yet 1.6 billion out of them have a mobile phone mm -hmm. so what exactly is Fiji and how does it plan to stimulate digital financial inclusion? So what so Fiji the financial inclusion global initiative it's a three-year program uh, between the partners that I just mentioned, the World Bank, the ITU, uh, and, uh, the, and the BIS, um, to really bring together the different important policymakers and regulators, um, private sector stakeholders, to um, kind of look at this opportunity that we have with the access um, and the, the, just the fact that so many people do have um, more access now to mobile phones and to connectivity and to say you know how do we look at this moment and actually do something um, to accelerate the pace of innovation and scale um, so that that two billion people also now have access to financial services that they might need to manage their daily lives um, so um, part of that is is doing uh, hosting these symposiums to bring together uh, regulators from the uh, telecommunications sector in different countries with banking regulators and to have them beginning to have conversations and on um, important issues like now digital ID and biometric uh, technologies, um, being able to use mobile phones and cards um, in the most remote places in the world to access financial services, but also what does that mean for um, consumer protection and data privacy and security and, and the trust in these services now that they're um, becoming so ubiquitous. So bringing them together in symposiums like this, but also a huge part of uh, this particular initiative is to also implement at the country level. Um, so there are uh, lessons that are coming out of the, the dialogue that we're experiencing here uh, at the symposium. Uh, recommendations for policy, recommendations for new technologies, um, for ways we work together, and um, the goal is to see those implemented and driving change in different countries. We have three countries where, uh, that are part of this uh, particular initiative. Um, those are Mexico, Egypt, and China, um, but we're hoping that uh, lessons will be applied all over the world, and so here at the symposium we have, uh, we have regulators from all corners um, of the globe coming to talk about what their experiences are in, in their own markets and how they're approaching it and where they're seeing innovation. Um, and so we hope what we're hoping for is kind of by bringing together very important partners um, for, uh, for the implementation and also implementing in, certain, in different markets and sharing lessons back through these symposiums that we're creating this you kind know, of innovation acceleration and cycle where um, we're going to see a lot more progress both on on the policy side but also on the infrastructure building and the implementation side as well uh, so apart from you know putting down to the aggregators and like getting mobile operators and banks together like how it's happening at the symposium mm -hmm. apart from that another issue uh, that we kind of want to talk to you about is what according to you are the factors uh, that the poorest of people would prefer to switch over to digital financial services over the traditional method of cash banking what do you think those small factors would be? Well, I think there are there are many, um, and I, 
ones that uh, that are that come to mind immediately for me are around security okay. um, and and privacy. Really, that uh, that through mobile banking or other forms of digital financial services, it is uh, potentially a safer way to hold your money, to save your money, and also to transact um, without ever having to actually have cash in your pocket. Um, so going about your daily life, making purchases, sending money home, saving, having access to small amounts of credit um, so that you can make investments uh, in you know, your small business or in the education of your children, um, receive your government benefits, any of those types of things, that you're able to do that uh, easily, safely, um, and, with, and securely. I think that there are also a lot of challenges to getting there. Uh, before people will start to prefer this over cash, um, there needs to be more ubiquitous access than there is now. Um, connections uh, and uh, to the different um, types of people that you would want to transact with, first of all. Um, if you're going to be making a small payment at a merchant, they need to be able to accept the payment. Um, if you're going to, if I wanted to send you money through a mobile phone, you need to be able to receive it. Um, there needs to be great network connectivity so that that happens immediately and securely so that I can trust that when I do that, you're going to receive that money. And so convenience, access, trust in the system and that it will work are all really core components to actually creating something that creates more value um, and is and more uh, a bit more utility I guess in someone's life than what they have with cash in their hand because cash we know cash um, and it for a lot of people it's it's what works and there has to be something that works better has to be um, it has to either be lower cost or the cost has to, what the benefits that you receive from it have to outweigh uh, what it might cost to actually use it. So we have a ways to go before that becomes the case and that's really what Fiji is all about. Correct. It's kind of taking the word out into the world to tell them about the digital financial services and its benefits, right? It's taking the word out, but it's also bringing together the decision makers Correct. that create the products and services yeah. that um, regulate the, um, the communications infrastructure in a country that regulate the financial inf uh, infrastructure in a country and having them understand what the barriers are to creating that value and that access and that confidence and trust and, and, and having them kind of work out the thorny issues. I mean, a lot of the conversations we're having here right now are pretty technical ones um, and they can be rather sticky, but if we're unable to, if, we're, uh, if we are able to unlock some of those barriers and those challenges, it's going to make all the difference for, be able, for being able to achieve our ultimate goals. Uh, more specifically to your organization, what exactly is the Gates Foundation looking at? What are the concerns they're looking at into bridging this digital financial inclusion gap, basically? Bringing together partners like the World Bank and the ITU and, and CPMI and the BIS to who also have share the same objectives that we that we share, but us now being able to support them to focus in on this, on the country implementations, on the working groups that we have discussing different aspects of what it'll take to uh, to really accelerate inclusive digital financial services um, is really a core 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 to what we do, um, and we think that this is going to be a really critical partnership for seeing us reach that goal. Great, and it's great to have you on board, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank, Thank you. you so much.